peace and freedom and grace be with you. My name is John Clifton. Welcome to another episode of Hard Fire. Uh, this one is a follow-up to a previous uh, discussion uh, regarding the tax uh, code and people's obligations or non-obligations uh, thereof. Uh, the previous program had uh, as guests uh, the tax honesty uh, author uh, Peter Hendrickson and um, a tax preparer uh, named Audrey uh, Dessard. Uh, we hope to have both of them back today, but for some reason Ms. Dessard was not able to uh, make this episode. Uh, but we do have Peter Hendrickson on the line, and I'd like to hear uh, Peter uh, say hello. Hello, John. Hello, all. Uh, yes. I'm glad you're with us. Um, and uh, the topic today um, was going to be at least an overview of the issue of wages versus income uh, in the um, as construed by various uh, people in the tax um, on the tax issue, um, Mr. Sarp was going to send, defend the position that all income is income, therefore uh, everyone was obligated to uh, pay income taxes. Your position was going to be and is, I understand, a different one, namely that wages are exempt from the category or the definition of income. Or am I incorrect? Let me let me clarify that, John. <coughs> It's important to draw a distinction between the legal term wages, which is a custom-defined term within the uh, revenue law, mm -hmm. and wages as people tend to think of that word, uh, meaning uh, earnings for work. Uh, mm -hmm. Earnings for work don't necessarily constitute uh, 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 income, as that term is meant in the law. Mm -hmm. uh, in other words, don't constitute something taxable. They don't reflect the uh, engagement in a taxable activity. Wages, on the other hand, when speaking in the context of the internal revenue laws, mean nothing but the custom-defined term uh, that is spelled and pronounced the same way, and that is exclusively uh, remuneration paid to federal officers and employees, and consequently is indeed uh, income uh, representative of, tax, of engaging in a taxable activity and is subject to the income tax. Oh, so let me clarify uh, a couple things here. When you're going by that definition, um, as um, you say, I, um, internal revenue um, definitions go. Uh, is that a consequence of people consenting to be uh, employees, federal employees, by working for the federal government, uh, by actually working there, or by filling out a form um, to s that basically creates a presumption that they are uh, the employees? Are, or are you saying that the, the definition is a binding definition in the law on everybody. <clears throat> it's a binding definition in the law. The law is, is perfectly explicit about it. It defines uh, wages as remuneration paid to employees and defines employees as officers, employees, or elected officials of the United States, a state, or any political subdivision thereof, or the District of Columbia, or any agency or instrumentality of any one or more of the foregoing. Uh, and by the way, when the term state uh, is used in this language, state is also a custom defined. Mm -hmm. term in the law. It does not mean Ohio. It means uh, it means what it means according to this provision of the law. Mm -hmm. Applicability of administrative provisions. All provisions of the laws of the United States applicable to the assessment and collection of any tax imposed by this title or of any other liability arising under this title, including penalties, shall, in respect of such tax or liability, extend to and be applicable in any possession of the United States in the same manner and to the same extent as if such possession were a state of the United States, and that means belonging to the United States. The United States in and of itself being a custom-defined term. We get kind of yeah. layer yeah. after layer here. Now, um, when you say custom-defined term, is that equivalent to what some people more uh, who are critical of the way some, certain of these laws and rules are written, uh, the term words of art? Words of art, indeed, yes. Yeah, so it, it can be, it's, a, it's a term that's been Customarily re redesigned or engineered to mean something that's advantageous to what the IRS wants. And it is advantageous because these, these terms, these words of art, uh, amount to homonyms for words that are in common usage mm -hmm. and which have completely contrary meanings. The, the, the meaning of the word of art version in mm -hmm. the code has a similar meaning in this sense. A an employee in the code, while it is confined to a certain class of people who work for other people, mm -hmm. it still means people who work for other people. And so the relationship there is, is a very nuanced uh, distinction between people who work for other people mm -hmm. as a general class yeah. and people who work for other people within the federal government. 
and just to uh, make this clear to the average person here who might this, this has already gone over their heads uh, the words of art mean to is that when person reads anything um, or hears anything um, they're, they're thinking that the meaning of the words are what the regular people understand those meanings to be or at least the dictionary definition of those words That's correct. and they're not aware or keeping cognizant of the fact that there could be very specific meanings within um, the legal context for those same words and terms uh, defined by regulators or defined by the courts that take the meaning of those words, the same phrases, into an entirely different zone. That, that's exactly right. Yes, anytime something issues forth from a, from a tax agency that uses the word employee, that word that has to be presumed to be the term employee as defined in the law which does not mean some, simply somebody who works for somebody else. It means exclusively an elected official or employee of the federal government, which is how that term is defined in the law. Yeah. Anytime they use the term wages, mm -hmm. they're not talking about earnings for, for labor or earnings for work. They're talking about remuneration paid to an employee as, de as we defined it a moment ago and so, nothing else. So this is what part of what, well, again, a lot of us critical people of the, the tax system call the, something like the tax fraud uh, begins to arise. A uh, person fills out commonly a 10, uh, excuse me, a W-4 when they go to work, and the form says employee on it. For they you use one set term, and, and they're thinking employee means they're working the person they're working for in the private right. sector. Whereas, in terms of what's legally binding, that's embodied in that term is you're agreeing that you are an employee of the federal government. Uh, that's exactly correct. Those forms are only intended to be filled out by that certain class of, of, of worker, that's a, a, a federal employee. And the law is very clear about this. The, the, the amazing thing is that, that, that while you, you make reference to, to a fraud, mm -hmm. and it is very nearly a constructive fraud at least, mm -hmm. in that, that it is widely known, highly understood, that most people have no idea of these, these distinctions and these nuances, mm -hmm. and, and the beneficiaries of the tax system make no effort to, to, uh, to clue them in. None whatsoever. They, in fact, they bend over backwards to not clue them in, and this is demonstrated by the fact that, for instance, the definitions that uh, of these terms are never included with documents that are sent to uh, companies across America instructing right. them to do this and that regarding their employees or to mm -hmm. do this and that regarding wages mm -hmm. that they paid. When, when so, a, a company receives a, a, a notice of that sort, it doesn't say, and by the way, the wages we're talking about are defined as this. They never yeah. say that. They rely on, on a, a, a legal... Uh, principle, which is that the, the, the party responding to a legal requirement is expected to know the limits of that requirement or to seek them out. It, it, is, mm -hmm. it, it is incumbent upon them. It's their responsibility to know the legal limits of the, of the thing that they're dealing with. And so mm -hmm. they can sit back and say, well, we didn't exactly lie to them. I mean, we didn't command them to do this in regard yeah. to their workers. We only told them to do it in regard to their employees. And they're supposed to know that when we're talking employee, mm -hmm. we mean federal officers and employees. Now, of course, this would never be tolerated if the private sector uh, misled <laughs> constructively. Oh, no, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. It's, it's kind of like uh, what happened to, uh, to uh, Ponzi as compared to what happens in the Social Security system, the way yeah. it tends to be administered. One is the government program, retirement program, they say, and the other is a scam. The other, the other guy ended up in prison. Yeah. Um, and even though I think he, at the end he returned 40% of people's money that he I believe destroyed. He did. Uh, I and, that, and that might be more than um, what a lot of Social Security retirees oh. <laughs> get I don't, in the I, don't expect, I don't expect to see that much. <laughs> yeah. Um, so th the upshot of all this, for again, for people who are trying to follow, is now this is where we, we, we have points of agreement and we can then they veer into points of disagreement. A person who then, you know, is filing these forms, uh, the 10, the W, I keep starting to say 10-4, but uh, I mean W-4 mm -hmm. and 1099s and et cetera, et cetera, W-9s, they're creating a presumption by, by filing that form that they are under the categories defined in that form that they've signed, and therefore they've made themselves subject to well. payment of Exposure and subject and liability to income taxes. I would say that they, I would say that they have they have furnished uh, support for the presumption that they yeah. are, belong to a certain class that is uh, subject to to certain laws. Uh, I, I would disagree with the proposition that they have actually made themselves legally subject. 
I, I, I have filled up W-4s before, okay. and when I do, I am doing it on this basis. I am saying that if indeed it should prove to be the case at some point in the future, uh, due to some idiosyncrasy of some work that I do at some point, uh, perhaps even unbeknownst to me, that I actually am paid wages as defined in the law and to which this form is, uh, is, uh, is connected or properly applies, then this is how I want it to be treated. And, uh, but the responsibility for determining whether that's actually happened mm-hmm. is up to the person that, that is, is going to act on this information. I'm not saying that mm-hmm. what I get paid is going to constitute wages. Absolutely not. Mm-hmm. It would be ridiculous for me to say that. Yeah. I don't work for the federal government. No. But, if, but, but since I've been asked to fill this form out, it is a prospective uh, submission. It is an, okay, you're sort of suggesting that at some point maybe I would mm-hmm. get paid wages from you. Well, if that if that, it should prove to be true, mm-hmm. then here's how I want them. Uh, here's how, here's the, here's the number of deductions that I want to to apply, and here's the mm-hmm. here's how the exe- I want the exemptions to work. So it's a perspective thing, um, kind of an if if mm-hmm. if then. Now, uh, just to summarize, one of the, the major uh, benefits of people that are in store for people if they get your book and you're free to state the name and whereabouts and where to get it and whatever. How do you undo this uh, this process of providing and furnishing evidence that creates a presumption. Well, here's, here's, here's the way the, 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 the system works. People who pay other people in this country have been uh, encouraged, intimidated, uh, uh, fooled, and everything just short of defrauded into engaging in a practice of creating affidavits, legal, legal declarations, mm-hmm. alleging the payment of a, of, of a taxable uh, thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm going to draw a quick distinction here, uh, mm-hmm. or make a quick explanation, and then I'm going to abandon it for the rest of our conversation because right. it's really clunky. But it's mm-hmm. important uh, that the people understand that the tax, the income tax, is not on the money, mm-hmm. uh, even if that money is uh, related to the taxable activity. That the tax is on a taxable activity. It's an excise tax on the privilege mm-hmm. of uh, exercising a, a, a government prerogative mm-hmm. and profiting thereby. And so mm-hmm. the, ta- the money is just the thing we measure the amount of activity engaged in mm-hmm. by. So we're gonna conti- I'm going to continue to refer to you know, the money as being the income, uh, but, but what, I'm really, what it really means is the money is the measure of the taxable activity that was engaged in. Mm-hmm. So uh, leaving that aside, so what, what people do when they, when they pay other people, they have been encouraged to create these affidavits saying mm-hmm. that the money they paid was actually income as that term is legally meant. In other words, it is a reflection of a taxable activity. Therefore, a tax can arise from it. Right. Now, the, the, the system recognizes that those allegations can often be made incorrectly. Mm-hmm. And it provides mechanisms for the, those about whom these allegations have been made to correct the record, mm-hmm. to respond and rebut and correct erroneous mm-hmm. affidavits. And, oh. and those mechanisms take several different forms. I'm going to have to stop you there so we can, we're going to go right back to, to what performs and procedures are in place to, uh, to correct this. Uh, but first, I want to do my normal plug for the activity of the Libertarian Party in New York. Uh, as you can tell here, you're hearing information you're not going to necessarily hear anywhere else other than by uh, following programs like Hard Fire, which present to you various perspectives on liberty and the basis for those freedoms that we advocate uh, for New York and for the rest of the nation. I encourage you to go to uh, and explore the activity of the Manhattan LP, uh, which meets at the Ukrainian East Village restaurant every month, or I think the second Wednesday. Uh, go to ManhattanLP.org to get their activity. Uh, Queens County has an active party, uh, meets in Astoria every month. Uh, we are encouraged to go to LPQC.org to find out more details about their activity. And the state is, in fact, uh, very active indeed. And we hope you um, look at newyork.ny.lp.org to find out about the state move, uh, activity on behalf of liberty in New York State. Um, our guest, again, is Mr. Hendrickson. And he's in the middle of explaining. It was a bit of elaborate, but it required, I hope, uh, audience patience can um, hold up here while you go into what form or procedure is necessary, or at least in your system, in order to undo the damage, I think, uh, created by the, the typical forms people, people file when they are um, beginning right, to the work. information returns, such as yeah. W-2s, 1099s, K-1s, mm-hmm. et cetera. 
and it's not my system now, this is Congress's system, but Congress right. has provided, um, as it must, uh, just for the sake of due process, uh, mm -hmm. mechanisms for responding to uh, allegations that are incorrect. Now, right. Basically, a person has, has uh, three different ways they can respond to an allegation. Uh, uh, other than just ignoring it, which, which in and of itself is a response of the sorts. It's an affirmative response. They can acknowledge those allegations. They can correct those allegations to the degree that they're wrong, or they can rebut them entirely to the degree that, you know, in, in a case in which they're entirely wrong. Uh, when a, a, an information return like a W-2 or a 1099 is produced, it says two things. It says uh, Company A has paid this person both this amount of money and this amount of money is being legally declared to have been received yes. due to the engaging in a taxable activity. In other words, it is income. Uh, one or two, one or both of those things can be right. One or both of those things can be mm -hmm. wrong. Uh, and so the, the, the Congress has provided mechanisms for responding to those allegations. There's a reason, in fact, this is the mm -hmm. reason why people are sent a copy of these forms. And, yeah. and, and it is not just to, to let them know uh, what, what numbers to put on their tax mm -hmm. return. It's to give them notice that, that allegations have been made about them, allegations yeah. with a legal implication and, and, and to which they are entitled to respond. Okay. I, I think we, this would take maybe too long to just go into in terms of um, explaining all the parts of the... Well, the I'll, I'll, I'll cut to the chase. A, a 1040 is one of the chief mechanisms mm -hmm. for responding to these allegations and correcting them. Yes. It is the, the means by which a filer introduces his or her own testimony into the record mm -hmm. about their receipts and says either yes these receipts were were gained in this amount and did constitute income or mm -hmm. no they did not and so that's one of the mechanisms that, that congress provides or the treasury department anyway provides for people to respond to allegations there are also several other forms that are specifically intended to correct or rebut uh, erroneous information returns directly. Okay. For instance, there's a, a Form 4852, which is mm -hmm. specifically intended to correct erroneous W-2s. Yep. Uh, if, if someone has received a W-2 that, that has bad information on it, either an incorrect amount or that, the, that, that an amount mm -hmm. is paid at all, that it is incorrect. Uh, all right. I, I, by the, incidentally, I use 4852s um, and a specialized form, a 1040NR based on Chris Hansen, another tax advocate, uh, honesty advocate, in order to undo these misimpressions. Um, uh, not necessarily your system, because I hadn't been aware of uh, your Pacific book at, at the time I did this. Um, but that was through the method through which I have been avoiding or uh, basically responding to um, uh, and to the this trail erroneous trail of evidence yes. that was created and basically declaring independence of this tax fraud system, as I call it. Sure. Um, I, I just want to get back to the, the income versus wage question again, um, because one part of it may have went over the public's head in that you, you mentioned that the, the law is established that, it, that you know, what um, the definition of income is uh, and wages, um, but you didn't discuss the possible conflict between what the IRS documents and publications and titles, codes, whatever say, versus what the courts have said and what the courts have decided in the case law on the matter of wages versus income. Well, the, I've, I've yet to see any case law in which uh, a court has declared uh, non-federally related uh, earnings uh, to constitute income directly. Mm -hmm. uh, there, are, there have been many cases in which uh, lit litigants uh, or defendants have, have failed to argue this case uh, effectively and, and, and rulings which kind of seem to suggest that sort of a, of a conclusion uh, mm -hmm. are produced uh, uh, by the IRS. But, but those rulings tend to typically say things along the line of, well, of course wages are income. You know, the, the defendant argues that, that his wages aren't income. Uh, that's simply not true. Well, I agree. That's, that simply is not true. In the context of the tax law, wages are always income. Uh, the, the problem is uh, failing to recognize that, in the con that, 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 that earnings are not always wages mm -hmm. in the context of the tax law. Okay, well that gets a little more hairy a distinction. Uh, let me just read you the language of some uh, key sentences from some Supreme Court decisions, like uh, Clark versus U.S. Uh, quote, of course, gross income and not gross receipts is the foundation of income tax liability. For, for it is only earnings, profits, and gains which the statute subjects to tax, unquote. 
uh, or another uh, decision, Edwards versus uh, Deeth. The statute and the statute alone determines what is income to be taxed. It taxes only income derived from many different specified sources. One does not derive income by rendering services and charging for them, which I believe a phrase would cover um, all versions of labor and working out of one sure. labor and, and, and personal and effort. If I can throw one in, uh, United mm -hmm. States Supreme Court, South Pacific v. Lowe. Yeah. We must reject the broad contention submitted on behalf of the government that all receipts, everything that comes in, are mm -hmm. income. Right. Um, basically, I think the IRS wants receipts to be interpreted as income, and sure. these decisions say no, the receipts, um, that is, those oh, yeah. uh, of, of the proof of that people have worked and had per made personal efforts and made, uh, gotten a commission or whatever, uh, is not the same thing as a profit. Like if you put up $1,000 in a stock and the stock grows $100 in value, you've earned $100 in income. Oh, that, that's sure. income under most everybody's uh, understanding of law and... and uh, yeah, as long as it was a federal corporation. Yeah. The, the, there's, there's no question that the IRS would like everyone to imagine that income means all that comes in. Mm. And, there, the, and there's no question that the courts have repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly said income is a specialized class of receipts. It does not mean mm -hmm. all that comes in. And in fact, yeah. it can't mean all that comes in because to, to tax all that comes in would, would be to tax in the form of a capitation. Mm -hmm. And capitations are specifically prohibited constitutionally, not once, but twice. In fact, the only yeah. thing in the Constitution that is prohibited twice. In fact, the only thing that's <laughs> mentioned twice in the Constitution. Right. The founders were very serious about, uh, about ensuring that capitations did not exist in America. Uh, in fact, if you'll indulge me, I'd like to read uh, uh, the definition of capitation. All right. Can I go with that? Yes. Um, the taxes which it is intended should fall indifferently upon every different species of revenue are capitation taxes. Capitation taxes, if it is attempted to proportion them to the fortune or revenue of each contributor, become altogether arbitrary. The state of a man's fortune varies from day to day, and without an inquisition more intolerable than any tax, and renewed at least once every year, doesn't that sound familiar? Mm. Can only be guessed at. Capitation taxes, as far as they are levied upon the lower ranks of people, are direct taxes upon the wages of labor. And when I say wages here, this mm. is written in 1776. It does not mean wages in the, in the sense of the uh, definition in the Internal Revenue Code. That hadn't been written and wouldn't be for another 150 years. And are attended with all the inconveniences of such taxes. All right. So I, I, I understand. Well, I'm not going to say I understand every word of that because I just re heard you read it uh, off uh, for the first time. Um, but I, I do understand the flow of the argument. Uh, I just want to go back to one other element here that y when we're talking about what's written in the tax code and versus what else is binding on everybody versus binding on some people, uh, one of the things to keep in mind that it's a little specialized thing is uh, is that is the distinction between positive law, the regular law that mm -hmm. is binding on everybody, versus special law, mm -hmm. which comes from granting one's um, consent to a privilege. Right. Um, I, there, I have a language from a letter from um, the IRS which explained this definition. Uh, the Internal Revenue Code, quote, is not positive law or the regular law. It is special law. It applies to Pacific persons in the United States who choose to make themselves subject to the requirements of the special laws in the Internal Revenue Code by entering into an employment agreement within the U.S. government, unquote. Uh, this uh, that's was the uh, Joan uh, Hoverell uh, letter. Um, yes, that is. And that clarifies things uh, pretty much um, from the IRS's mouth itself, or at least one of their mouths. Uh, and I think it's one of the reasons why it's very hard to get the IRS on record. Uh, yeah, they, they do tend to dodge uh, questions, don't they? Yes. and. Um, and uh, however, they, they do respond well to, uh, to my readers, uh, uh, John. My readers have mm -hmm. uh, so far recovered uh, uh, several million dollars in mm. uh, uh, previously withheld amounts, mm -hmm. uh, which includes uh, um, amounts that were garnished from them, amounts that had been levied from them. Yeah. Uh, we have liens canceled. I just uh, saw for the first time mm -hmm. in my life, uh, after some uh, uh, 27 years now of involvement in this uh, subject, Mm -hmm. uh, for the first time, I saw a case closed to a notice of deficiency that was received by one of my readers uh, 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 on my website mm -hmm. at lostrisons.com. I have currently posted more than three quarters of a million dollars in refund checks right. received by readers over the course of the last 18 months. Marvelous, marvelous. And of course, um, last year you had uh, two victories, I believe, in court when the the, the courts, uh, so the IRS or, or whomever, tried to call you one of these 
illegal tax scam uh, situation. Three, three times, actually. Three, three times. times, all right. And they, you know, they went to court and they tried to shut you down and, and, and all that. And what was the outcome? The outcome was the Department of Justice um, uh, asking to be let uh, uh, drop the, their actions uh, uh, without my demanding uh, my costs from them, uh, which mm -hmm. I was gracious enough to grant. Yeah. And I believe that's a better track record than some other people in the tax honesty movement. I, I think it's sure. unique, actually, in the tax honesty yeah. in, in general, what I've observed is that it seems like those who try to directly argue or, for, or force an answer from the government get stonewalled. Um, and if they try to do it in the context of an own, their own personal uh, tax trial, um, they get hammered by it because the judge can always just uh, uh, shut down their attempt to introduce arguments about the law and side with um, the IRS the fact, uh, effectively, whereas those who, uh, such as your, yourself who have emphasized what the statutes say and, 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 and stuck to the facts in the administrative process have fared much better. Yes. Uh, and I, I think that might be the direction of the, the future movement. It, it, your approach, I would personally opine, has a lot to say uh, to go for in terms of simplicity. If a person just goes through the steps, they don't have to learn about all these myriad issues and definitions and words of art. Um, we have about one uh, minute to go. Uh, could you um, maybe say in like 30 seconds explain um, any other, or re just summarize your point of view and, 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 and its basis? Well, yeah, it, it, it's simple. Income is, is the, the, um, the exercise of federal prerogative and uh, measured by the benefit received for its exercise. Mm -hmm. It's a very simple proposition. Uh, it involves uh, ownership. Uh, the government is, is entitled to tax something that it has an ownership interest in or a property interest in, and it certainly has a property interest in its own powers mm -hmm. and its own property, and, uh, and it applies the tax accordingly. Uh, uh, the, the, uh, everything about this is, is clear in the law. It's simply deeply hidden mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, in statutory language that amounts to many millions of words, and it is not made to be easy to, uh, to take in. And mm -hmm. uh, it, it simply requires a lot of digging, a lot of research to, to get to, to the fine print. But the fine and, print is there. And you've done it so the rest of us don't have to. Uh, I, on right. that note, I have to say we're, we're, I'm sorry we're out of time. I could have gone another half hour with this or an hour, uh, but we can't. Uh, Great join, pleasure, us, John. join us again for another um, exciting episode of Hardfire.